What is Luminous Computing and what is your great idea? Yeah, so Luminous Computing is a moonshot semiconductor company in the AI space. The, the product we're building is the world's largest supercomputer. And keep in mind right now, the world's largest supercomputer is the size of a you know, multiple story building. Our chip is this big and it has more compute. Uh, it's specifically for AI applications because the number one thing that every AI, every person in AI will tell you is that the reason that we're still stuck in this world where you know Siri doesn't work on your phone and level five is this thing that's not going to happen for 10 years. Level five self-driving you refer self, to? Self-driving, yep. Self-driving with no steering wheel and you Self-driving with no steering wheel yeah. or you know, the reason why drones aren't flying everywhere, the reason why you know, data scientists, you know, their workflow is wake up in the morning, go you know, put a model on AWS, wait 12 hours, and then come back and see if it's done. All of, all of this is the same problem. They're all bottlenecked on not having just the sheer amount of compute necessary. Now, that flies in the face of what the common technologists would think. We're all sitting here thinking, well, Amazon created this giant cloud. So did Google. Facebook also built a huge army of computers. There's supposed to be these quantum computers coming. NVIDIA is making chips that seem absurdly powerful, unnecessarily powerful. Why does any gamer need 4K or 8K at 60 or 120 frames a second to play Doom, essentially? <laughs> it's called Fortnite now. They don't need this much power. What are we getting wrong? Why do people think that we've now hit a level where computing is unlimited when you're saying it's not? Yeah. So, well, I mean, I think the easiest way to see this is to take an example, right? So let's take, let's take self-driving cars. What does a self-driving car have to do? Well, first of all, you've got like 30 to 50 sensors on the car. So you've got gigabytes of data coming in every second. Hmm. Then you've got an, a latency constraint. So from the moment an object appears in the field of view of the car to the moment the car is done reacting, you've got... 200 milliseconds to get everything done. Ah. You lose half of that time just because it physically takes time to turn a steering wheel. So in the remaining 100 milliseconds, you have to take all of those gigabytes of data and turn it into a decision. Mm. In addition to this, you know, the sheer amount of data and the sheer amount of, you know, the, the short latency, you also have a power budget. So for cars, the number is something like 100 watts. And for right now, with the amount of compute that you need to put in the back of a car to make a level five self-driving car with no steering wheel actually happen, you'd be putting kilowatts of power in the car and your car will probably burst into flames from overheating. Okay, let me summarize. Yeah. Because this is some a way of thinking about it that I think is very instructive. Solving a bunch of math problems on a spreadsheet or a database. Yeah. Yeah, uh, or ripping, uh, making a new Pixar film. Sure, or playing a video game, you can have it draw in uh, the Pixar film and render for 30 minutes or three minutes, and there's no big deal. You're rendering. You can get a cup of coffee, yeah. or it's three or four seconds. Three or four seconds is 30 or 40 times what 100 milliseconds is, right? Yeah. So the speed at which a decision has to be made is one factor. Yeah. The second factor is the number of sensors we've unleashed on the world, yeah. primarily because of the f smartphone, which has enabled us to miniaturize sensors and make them commodities, like so cheap it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So you have people who are engineers saying, you know what, instead of putting three a sensor on each side of the car and having four, they're like, well, why don't we just put eight on each side of the car and have 30 yeah. or 40? So now you've got f you know, all those sensors, you have to make the decision quickly. And then to process all the data that's coming into those sensors, because those sensors are becoming higher fidelity, correct? Yeah. That's the other piece that I think- The sensors are getting better because they need to get better. Right. So an example of that might be, in layman's terms, the difference between having a, a HD 480 when you bought it 10 years ago to 720 to 1080 to 1080p to now what you see 5K, 4K, 8K screens coming out. Exactly. So that is literally four times, eight times what we normally thought of as HD, I'm using quotes. Some of these other sensors, I think, are also getting more precise, yes? Yeah, they're getting, I mean, you're putting like eight or 10 LIDARs on a car. <laughs> like this, Eight or 10, oh and my God. I, I saw one company do this. It, it varies per company. Um, but you have tons of cameras, you have accelerometers, you, you're 
you're measuring a bunch of different type of in, types of input data, mm. uh, and they're all extremely high fidelity, and you need this lo- this this quantity of data and this precision, you know, the precision in this measurement to actually be able to ship something that's safe. Yeah. So then you add to it, the application is critical. Yeah. So we have sensors with massive fidelity making micro fractions of a section sec, second decisions that are literally life and death. And on top of that, what people don't take into consideration is when you put one of those giant NVIDIA cards in your tower to play Fortnite or one of these games, Call of Duty, at some incredible frame rate, it's got four or five fans on it yeah, and a massive power supply that's plugged into the 110 volt in your house. Mm-hmm. Now you put it in a car and you have four of those, which is probably what's necessary, right? A couple of those in video cards? I, I've seen eight to 10. P- people are putting a ridiculous amount of compute in the back of these cars. And when, like you said, when you put these all together, it, it still barely works. And with this power budget thing, I mean, the cars just overheat. Yeah. Right. And that's why Tesla when they give their driving range now, when they when you put autopilot on, it's going to draw more power. Yeah. And when exactly. you go to full self-driving, their range is going to go from 200. Well, I think now their cars are 350. But it, a self-driving car might use, what, an extra 10, 20% of that energy? Uh, I mean, for reference, for every 100 watts of power you're spending on compute, you're also spending... Like eighty watts of power on cooling, uh, this can this can dominate your power budget. Wow! For the car, this will this can render cars like not useful. <laughs> wow! So you look at all of this, and you know the way people have traditionally tried to solve this is by making better AI or making better software. The problem is, is that the way naively at least AI has gotten better is that we've made our models bigger, hmm. and so <laughs> ironically. <laughs> Like the thing that we're doing to get to the safety is, you know, even more utilizing these chips. When you say making the model bigger, Mm -hmm. you're saying a larger data set. Larger data set. More data coming in. No, more parameters in the model. Ah. And so the models are getting bigger and the hardware isn't keeping up, Mm. right? So we can't, when we optimize to say, use these chips less, we take cuts on accuracy. But if we optimize, the models, we take hits on the hardware utilization. 